Hallelujah. If it's a little warm in here, I apologize. If you've been here before, you realize that uh, the air conditioning is working. It's, it's on cool, but uh, just sometimes it's that, that hot air of believers, amen. But we're, it's the outside. And, uh, but it's a whole lot better than Afghanistan. A whole lot better than anywhere else in the world. But uh, Psalm 105 in verse 1, it says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord. <clears throat> And call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing to him. Sing psalms to him. Talk of all of his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Seek the Lord in his strength forever. Seek his face forever. And remember his marvelous, marvelous works which he has done. His wonders and his judgments of his mouth. Praise the Lord. This morning we get to remember of the wondrous works of the Lord. Amen. Just recall it to our mind. And uh, we're going to have a great service today. I'm expecting uh, that to happen. God is here. The Lord is here tonight, this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's all stand to our feet. And let's just begin to pray. Amen. Let's just begin to ask the Lord to have his way in this service. Come on, I ask you to lift up your voice and lift up your hands. Father, we thank you, Lord, today that you are good. Lord, we worship you this morning. We invite your presence into this house. Lord, we ask that you would just have your way. Lord, right now, let your glory just rest upon us this morning. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, we seek your face. And we, we sing of your marvelous works and who you are. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We give you glory. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. for his love this morning for God so loved the world for God so loved the world that he gave us his one and only son to save us whoever believes in him will live forever oh hallelujah the power of hell forever defeated now it is well I'm walking in for God so loved, God so loved the world. Come all you weary, oh come all you weary, come all you thirsty, come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Oh thank you Jesus, come all you sinners, come all you sinners. you're looking for hallelujah i found what i'm looking for for god so love for god so love the world that he gave us his one and only son to save us whoever believes in him will live forever So love, God so love the world. Bring all your failures, oh bring all your failures, bring your addictions, come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting there with open arms. Oh yes, thank you, Lord, for God so love. His one 
portion. Oh, we are his portion and he is our pride. Drawn to redemption by the grace in his eyes. If his grace is an ocean, we're all sinking. Well, thank you, Lord. Oh, and heaven needs earth like an unforeseen kiss. And my heart turns violently inside of my chest. And I don't have time to maintain these regrets when I think about
But he's a good, good father. If you had the best of fathers, best of earthly fathers, and thank the Lord for it, he's better than that. He's even better than that. He's a good, good father. I'm so thankful that he gives us his peace that passes all understanding. Hallelujah. There's a line in that song that says, I can hardly think. It's the peace that passes all understanding, hallelujah, that he deposits into us, that he gives us, no matter what's going on around us. And I know that we know there's a lot going on around us. You're in 2021, same as me. <laughs> and there's a lot going on. But man, he will keep us in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He'll guard our hearts and our minds with the peace that passes all understanding. Hallelujah. He's a good, good father. He's a good, good father. I don't know what needs you came in with this morning, but no need in taking it home with you tonight. <clears throat> I say tonight. Maybe here a little while. <laughs> But no need in taking it, taking out what you came in with. I believe he wants you to drop it right now. He wants you to drop it before the final amen is ever proclaimed. He wants you to give it all to him. Hallelujah. Give it all to him. Give it all to him. I know there's things that can trouble our mind, but he wants you to give it to him. Just come and give it to him. And if you find it's too heavy, the Lord, I can't even pick it up to drop it. He'll come to where you are, and he'll take it up off of you. That's how good he is. He'll come to right where you are, and he'll take it up off you. I'm so thankful for that this morning. I'm so thankful for that. Thank the Lord. If you need healing this morning in any capacity, in your body, in your mind, in your heart, in your emotions, in your spirit, there's a healer that's in the house. He's still in the house. Hallelujah. He's still in the house. And we're not talking about the building. Hope you know that. And thank the Lord we're fixing to need a bigger one. Because this one's getting a little warm. <laughs> Bless your heart. But take out that little piece of paper. Fan yourself. I'm thankful for the coolness of the Holy Ghost in the house. Hallelujah. The coolness of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. If you need to touch from the Lord this morning in any capacity, I'm going to ask you to come on ahead. We want to lay hands on you and believe God to do what only He can do. Hallelujah. Jesus is here.
like that song says that death could not hold him down I tell you if death could not hold him down then there's nothing too hard for God as I ministered last night we got sin and we got death and we have Satan against us but Jesus conquered them all I said Jesus conquered them all hallelujah he conquered them all and we have the victory this morning through our Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah praise the Lord praise God and again I, we apologize for if it's hot in here okay we're just imagine yourself on a missions trip all right it's gonna be all right if you need a if you need a bottle of water there's bottles of water in the refrigerator please feel free to get one but uh, praise the Lord you may be seated this morning it reminds me of a time that Sharon and I and actually the kids and well we, we were we were ministering up in Arkansas northern Arkansas in the summertime and there was a heat wave that came through and uh, it was kind of a little storefront like this and their AC went completely out I mean completely out and it was like 90 something degrees okay it's not even close to that right just to let you know but it's a, it was like 90 something degrees in in the little area and the pastor was like I don't know what to do and we were like you know what let's just we he asked some of the people and they were like let's just do it let's have church and we were all sweating like crazy <laughs> but we had a great service and then afterwards we went to a creek that was not far away and we had a baptismal service I'm serious I'm serious and after, the, after that, we had the cliffs, and the kids were jumping off the cliffs into the water and everything. It was a great time. Anyway, anyway. But anyway, we don't have a baptismal service afterwards or cliffs to jump off. But praise the Lord. But uh, we're so thankful that you are here. It's so good to see you. It's so good to have some, some visitors here in the house. Uh, uh, Cindy and Tim, right? They're Josh's mom and dad. And why don't we welcome them here today? Praise the Lord. We've, we've just fallen in love with your son, Josh, and we love you as well. Praise God. And it's so good as well to have a, a part of our, we feel like he's a part of our family. And it, uh, Aaron uh, Stanberry, uh, he's from, he lives in Baton Rouge now, originally from Oklahoma. But Aaron, we love you. It's so good to have Aaron here today. And Aaron, as you know, but we, we own some properties there in Baton Rouge and uh, some Airbnbs, which is kind of interesting. Sharon's phone has been blowing up all morning. Uh, people are, are, for whatever reason, they're, they're wanting to uh, uh, rent our Airbnbs to escape the storm. And it's like, okay, we're right in the, we're right in the going storm's going to hit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if, you, <laughs> if that's what you want, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but we really uh but aaron has been such a help to me and, and he's we we could on some of the houses that he's helped me with we we could have done a reality tv show i'm serious it was just amazing but he's been a, a part of the family and big help to us and we need to pray as we need to pray for that those in the eye or uh, in the path of that storm and uh and just pray for for safety and that that thing would just Dissolve, or it would not be as bad as they're predicting. Can we, can we pray for that? It, it kind of touches our home. We're, we have a Baton Rouge connection, so let's pray for them right now. Can we do that, Father? In the name of Jesus, we lift up right now all of those that are in the path of that storm, Ida. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. And you said in your word, Lord, that every name, Lord, every every person, every name must bow before the name of Jesus. And Lord, Ida must bow before the name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray right now that for safety, that that storm, Lord, would not be as strong, that it would dissolve, it would dissipate, the winds would not be as strong. But Lord, we even that, God, we ask you, Lord, for protection, divine protection, especially for your people and everyone in the path of it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. 
God, we even pray for our own property. So, Lord, you'd keep them safe from flooding, from wind damage, from it all. In the name of Jesus, all those, Lord, there at Jimmy Swagger Ministries, God, we pray for safety for the for JSM, that there'd be no damage done to the ministry. God, we thank you, Lord, for your hand that's upon them in Jesus' name. And God, we believe you, Lord. We thank you for that. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna continue our worship this morning with our with our giving, our tithe, and our offering. If I get Brother Nate uh, and and um, Brother Tim, could you help this morning with the get the uh, baskets there this morning? And we're gonna worship the Lord with our tithe and offerings. And and if you are making a check, you're gonna make it out the Covenant Church or uh, Cornell Ministry, Covenant Church, right right at the Covenant Church. Those that are watching online here, either now or later, uh, you can go to CornellMinistries.com. Uh, you can give online, or if you want to send a check, there's an address on there you can send it to. So as I say sometimes, we're still waiting on that uh, million-dollar check. Okay, we're still waiting. <laughs> or we're, we're waiting on that somebody to say, you know, like we got some land or a building that... We just want to, just want to bless you with, and uh, he's a God of miracles, Amen. He's a God of miracles. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just ask you to bless this offering, this ties, Lord. We thank you, Lord, as we say, Lord, always, God, what comes into our hands comes from yours, and we thank you, Lord, for it. That you said in your word that as we, as as we sow back into your work. That God, you will get, you will make all grace abound unto us. So we give you praise for th for that. We thank you, Lord, for that. And Father, we ask you, Lord, to bless every individual, bless every family, and bless this church collectively in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. Praise the Lord. Go ahead, brethren. Praise God.
him up this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give him a hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Go ahead and give him another hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, I know that we'd be running. Well, <laughs> we'd probably run into each other. <laughs> But if, if we really believe that the enemy has been defeated, that the enemy has been defeated, hallelujah, we lift his name up. We lift his name up. And I know you do. I know that you believe the enemy's been defeated. Even when it doesn't look like it in the natural, even when it doesn't feel like it in the natural, we know that the enemy has been defeated. Hallelujah. We know that the enemy has been defeated. Jesus crushed the head of Satan. Hallelujah. At the cross 2,000 years ago, the enemy may have crushed his heel, but as my husband said, I'd rather have my heel crushed than my head crushed. <laughs> And Jesus crushed the head of the enemy. The enemy has been defeated. He has been defeated. And I know we still live in this world, though we're not of it. We are still in it. And we, we experience trial. We experience tribulation. But I'm thankful that Jesus said that we can be of good cheer. <laughs> We can be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. <laughs> Hallelujah. Good news this morning. The simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We win. We win because he already won. Thank the Lord for that this morning. Thank the Lord. Praise God. I know I'm not going to keep you too much longer. <laughs> Just as long as he wants you kept. <laughs> And, uh, you know, he's got a better plan than I do. I'm so thankful for that. And we, uh, again, apologize for the heat. It's beyond our control, not beyond his control. But we're thankful that we have at least some AC. As my husband mentioned, we're not on a, on a, on a missions trip in Honduras where it gets really, really hot. And all we're doing is blowing hot air around. Not this hot air. <laughs> uh, thank you, fellas and, and ladies. We appreciate you all so much. Aren't you thankful for our praise and worship team? Oh, I'm so thankful. So thankful that as the praises go up, the blessings come down. Praise God. And he inhabits the praises of his people. Thank the Lord for that. And I know, uh, and I'm not making light of it, I know it's warm and I love you all. You're enduring to the end. Praise God. You're enduring to the end. And uh, I'll, I'll leave that, everything else off that I was going to say. Uh, bless your heart. Nehemiah chapter th uh, 4, if you'll turn with me there, under the Old Covenant, under the Old Testament. Nehemiah chapter 4, we're going to start there and read a few verses and we're going to hop over, uh, turn right for a minute and turn to Nehemiah chapter 6. But Nehemiah chapter 4, it's talking here about how the Lord was using Nehemiah, using the children of Israel to build the wall. <laughs> he was using the children of Israel, using Nehemiah to build the wall. And let me interject this here. Sister Vicki, I know you're watching and we love you. Yeah. We love you and we miss you and we are praying for you. Sister Melinda came up and stood in line for you. Got some other sisters and all of us really that are believing God for your full and total recovery. You're going to be here before long uh, and we're thankful for her. We love Sister Vicki, Sister Sharon. Uh, we appreciate you all so, so very much. Uh, and all of our folks that are watching by Facebook this morning or maybe by YouTube later on, we love you. And this word is for you just as much as it is for us this morning. Morning. I believe the Lord has laid this passage on my heart for such a time as this. That for such a time as this, Nehemiah chapter 4, and give me a good amen if you're there this morning. Amen. amen. That's good for some hot folk. Uh, Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse 1. But it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we built the wall, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews.
And he spoke before his brethren in the army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of rubbish which are burned? Have we got any burnt stones in the house this morning? Have we got any burnt stones? And I know we've been alluding to the heat, but that's not what it's talking about here. It's talking about burnt stones. What was remaining, what was remaining of the beauty of God's temple. God uses burnt stones. God uses burnt stones. He's still using burnt stones to build up his kingdom. One stone at a time. Hallelujah. One burnt stone at a time. Verse 17, they which build it on the wall and they that bear burdens with those that laid it, every one of his hands wrought in the work and with the other hand held a weapon. They had a hammer in one hand and a sword in the other. They were about, they were willing to fight and they were willing to build. Boy, this may be a little more sober than I, than I, than I had intended. How many are ready to build? Amen. How many are ready to fight? <laughs> Let's pray this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you right now that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, that's whose name we've gathered in. Lord, that's whose name we're coming in. And Lord, I thank you that you are all powerful. Lord, that you are almighty. Hallelujah. That the name of Jesus is greater than every other name. Hallelujah. Lord, you're greater than every enemy. You are greater than every storm. Lord, you're greater than every circumstance in our lives. And Lord, I thank you that you are doing doing a great work. Hallelujah. You are doing a great work, Lord, in us and through us. And Father, I pray that you would continue to do the work. Lord, we are your workmanship. And Lord, I thank you that you're doing a great work in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. He's going to get all the glory. He is going to get all the glory. We got to understand this morning that the work of God is about people. It is about people. And I'm so thankful that I'm looking at a group of believers this morning that can believe God for anything. That you can believe God for anything. And that in one hand, you got a sword. And that in the other, you got a hammer. In one hand, you got a hammer. In the other hand, you got a sword. You're not intimidated by the work and you're not intimidated by the enemy. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that the Lord is on our side? Oh, I'm thankful that he's on our side. Hallelujah. He is on our side this morning. Doesn't matter what comes into your life. Doesn't matter what comes into your heart. He is the victor. He's the victor. And he, I say he's on our side. Really, we are on his side. And one with him is a majority. Just one with him is a majority. In verse chapter, uh, excuse me, verse 1, it came to pass that when Sanballat heard, don't you know that the enemy has heard? I got to tell you, the enemy has heard. He has heard what God is fixing to do, not just fixing to do, what God is already doing. What God is already doing in your heart and in your life. Anytime that the anointing of God is going forth, the enemy hears about it. The enemy is going to hear about it. But I'm thankful that the anointing and the presence of God breaks every yoke of bondage. It breaks every yoke of bondage. Hallelujah. I'd rather have just one moment in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Just one moment in the presence of God where I'm changed for time and for eternity than a thousand cathedrals. <laughs> they look really good on the outside. <laughs> They may even be pretty on the inside. But there's a whole lot of this going on. Yeah, we do need to wake up. 
We do need to wake up. The church needs to wake up. And I know it's hot, and I wouldn't fault you if your eyes get heavy. But uh, understand, there's a, there's a church that God is raising up in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Hallelujah. That's not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That has a hammer in one hand. Hallelujah. And a sword in the other. And it doesn't matter what the enemy has heard. We've heard what God has spoken. We've heard what the Lord has said. And I believe he said, said build. I believe he said build. And again, I'm not talking about a building. You can put me under a tree. You can put me under a tree and I'm going to still, still present the same message of Jesus Christ and him crucified. I'm still going to declare the glorious works of God. Hallelujah. So I'm not talking about a physical building, but I'm talking about this building. I'm talking about that building, and you can point the finger at yourself. He's building you up. He is building you up. He's building me up. He's building us up. And when the enemy hears about it, don't you know he's going to send a sand ballad or two? <laughs> what a great name. <laughs> if you've got to be in the Bible, man, sand ballad. Sand ballad and Tobiah. He's going to send an enemy or two. He's going to send an enemy or two that are going to do this. As my husband likes to say, the enemy likes to chatter in our ears. He likes to chatter when you're all by yourself at 3 o'clock in the morning. Here comes the enemy knocking on your door, not asking to come in, but trying to intrude. Here he comes chattering. He's going to chatter. He's going to tell you anything that he can try and get you to believe. But as, I've, as the Bible tells us, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. So even when we've got to say, Lord, help thou my unbelief, he is right there with you. He is right there with you. Thank the Lord. He is right there with you. He's right there with you as the enemy is doing yang yang yang. And I'm not going to start saying what he's saying because he'll say anything. And what he says to me may not be what he says to you. But ultimately, everything that he says, even when he's quoting scripture, it's a lie. Even when he's quoting the word, even when he's quoting truth, it's a lie because he's the enemy and he's the father of lies. So we can put everything that he says out of our heart and out of our mind and we can truly rejoice and be glad. Hallelujah. We can truly rejoice and be glad knowing that the enemy is going to come. One of the greatest tools of the enemy is fear. One of the greatest tools of the enemy is fear, even for the child of God, even for believers. At this time in, in history under Nehemiah, the, the children of Israel were, were, had gone astray and man, oh man, aren't they like us? Aren't we like them? They go astray, but the Lord allows happenings to come to, to, to cause us to come back and to woo us to himself. To woo us to himself, ultimately. And I understand not everything that comes is, is uh, the enemy. Some things come because we're stupid. <laughs> I taught my kids not to say that word, and here I am. <laughs> but we do our own stuff. We do our own foolishness. But I'm thankful that we serve a God this morning that comes after us even in the midst of our foolishness. Even when we go astray and we walk the other way, he's wooing us back to himself. He's constantly wooing us back to himself. And I say all the time, I'm thankful that he's got a long arm. Oh, he's got a really long arm. Hallelujah. He's got a really long arm. I'm thankful for that. And he's got really big ears. Because when we cry out, he hears us. When we cry out, he hears us. And the enemy came. And I know that the children of God cried out. Nehemiah cried out. And you see that in verse 4 uh, where he says, Hear, O our God. For we are despised and turn their reproach upon their own head and give them for a prey in the land of captivity. Shoo, what a prayer. <laughs> Man, that's a little harsh, Nehemiah. <laughs> Maybe you haven't been face to face with, with Sanballat and Tobiah. 
when you've been face to face with the enemy and he's chattering and he's trying to bring fear and he's trying to bring discouragement, you want him out. You want him out. You want him out. Hear, oh, our God. Hear, oh, our God. Get this enemy away from us. Take this enemy out, Lord. We know that you are our victor. Remove the enemy. Lord, remove the enemy. We don't want to stop the work, and we're not going to stop the work. We're not going to stop the work, even though Sanballat and Tobiah come. Look with me uh, to chapter 6 here. Now it came to pass... Chapter 6 and verse 1, now it came to pass when Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem the Arabian and the rest of our enemies, wasn't enough for Sanballat and Tobiah, they brought some more. (laughs) And Geshem the Arabian and the rest of our enemies heard that I had built the wall, built the wall, and that there was no breach left therein. Though at that time I had not set up the doors upon the gates, that Sanballat and Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some of the villages in the plain of Ono. (laughs) Oh no. Yeah, you all know. (laughs) Oh no. We're not going to go to the valley of Ono. We're not going to go to the plains of Ono. Then Senbalat and Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some of the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me mischief. They thought to do me mischief. They thought to do me harm. And I sent messengers unto them. (laughs) Oh yeah. Saying, I am doing a great work. Hallelujah. I am doing a great work. So that I cannot come down. Hallelujah. Why should the work cease while I leave it and come down to you? We are staying on the wall. Hallelujah. We are staying on the wall. Hallelujah. We are staying on the wall. The enemy is going to come. The enemy is going to go. Anybody had a sand ballot or Tobiah? Maybe I ought not to ask for a show of hands. (laughs) Or feet. Because some of you are saying, uh, it's not just one, it's two. And all my limbs really need to be up. And I say, I say that in jest, but I understand that when the enemy comes, it's real. Spiritual warfare is real. Spiritual warfare is real. And I understand we've won the battle, that the Lord ultimately has won the war, but battles come. Spiritual battles come, and he has won every battle. As long as our faith is placed in him and what he did for us at Calvary, the blood is more than enough. The blood is more than enough. Hallelujah. The blood is more than enough. Thank the Lord. You can hear that this morning, devil. The blood is more than enough. Hallelujah. The blood of Christ is more than enough. More than enough for every enemy. No matter how many enemies he brings, no matter what it is. And I said a moment ago that fear is one of the greatest tools of the enemy. One of the greatest weapons that the, that the enemy will use against a child of God we know he does it with the world but even with a child of God he'll try to bring fear he'll try to bring fear he'll put things in our mind that in the natural are very real that in the natural are very real COVID is very real But our God is greater than COVID. Our God is greater than COVID. The blood is greater than COVID. Hallelujah. Our God is greater than COVID. Thank the Lord. I thank the Lord. He is greater. He is greater. You may have got a bad report from the enemy or from the doctors. Your doctor's not your enemy. (laughs) God uses doctors and I thank the Lord for that. But you may have received a a bad report, but that's not the final report. That's not the final report, and I'm thankful that we have a report that we can believe. Hallelujah. And we're going to believe the report of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ida is a real enemy. (laughs) 
<laughs> and, and I know it's, it, uh, what day is it? August 29th? <laughs> They're kind of rolling into one now. August 29th, not really. August 29th, 2021, Ida is a real storm. It's a real storm. But our God is greater than Ida. Hallelujah. My God is greater than Ida. Our God is greater than every storm. Thank the Lord. And I know there's situations happening in our world right now that are not, that don't look good. They don't look good. And I'm, I'm, I'm asking you to all continue to pray for our folks in Afghanistan. That the Lord, as he lays them on your heart, that you would lift them up. There's believers there. As my husband said last night, believers there that are just like you and I. They're just like you and I. That when they gather, man, the presence of God comes down. Hallelujah. The presence of God comes down as they're lifting up the name of Jesus. We're still above ground. I'm so thankful we're still above ground. They're underground. But they're still lifting up his name. They're still lifting up his name. They're still lifting up his name and they're not denying his name in the face of a very real enemy. In the face of a very real enemy. And we need to be praying for them. I mean, pray for everyone there. But there's believers that are, are facing a very real threat. And we can pray. Aren't you glad your prayers go all the way over to Afghanistan? They go all the way over, hallelujah, to right where they are, maybe meeting right now under the cover of night. Our God is answering their prayer, hallelujah, that he's sending a shield, hallelujah, and that there are more with them than those that are against them. He can do it. He can confuse the enemy. He can confuse the enemy. He can send chariots of fire round about them. Our God can do it. Our God can do it. Man, I'm just, I'm reminded of what God did at Azusa Street at the turn of the last century. The fire trucks were called out multiple times because they thought the building was on fire. Hallelujah. They thought the building was on fire. It was the folks inside that were on fire. Hallelujah. It was the people inside that were on fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm thankful for a church on fire. Hallelujah. I'm thankful for a church on fire. My Lord. And that doesn't mean we have to float from the rafters. And I, and I know I can get excited. Oh, thanks, Leanne. Her too, she said. <laughs> Thank the Lord. And I know there's many of us. And I'm thankful for that. But when we're not shouting on the rafters... We're still a church on fire. We're still a church on fire. When Sanballat and Tobiah come and some of their enemies are coming with them, they send some messengers. <laughs> Amen. Oh, I love y'all preaching with me. This is so good. <laughs> they did lose. They did lose. Oh, I love our little church. I just do. I love y'all so, so much. I'm, I'm just going to interject that and try to move on. But we love y'all. Not as much as he loves you. <laughs> but he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Whether we're above ground or we're underground. We're a church on fire. <laughs> And he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. And I pray, I pray our church in America never has to come to the place that the church in Afghanistan is. But our God is in control. Our God is in control. And whatever he sees fit to do, it is right. Because he's the judge of all the earth, and he shall do right, and he is always love. He is always love. No matter what he allows to come or what he causes to come, it's out of love. 
It's out of his great love for us to woo us back to himself, to his precious bleeding side. Because he loves us. Because he loves us. Sanballat and Geshem sent unto me, come on, come on down off the wall, just for a minute. Come on down. You can, you can put up the sword for just a second. You can put your hammer down for just a minute. You need a little break. You can watch it online. <laughs> Uh, I'm not fussing at you. <laughs> Boy, David Borg said it Friday night. We, we got to rub shoulders with one another. I mean, I, I'm so thankful for what God is doing through SBN. I praise God for that. Because we need, we need airmen. We need, we need B-52s to bomb. But we need foot soldiers. We need boots on the ground. We need boots on the ground, and you can't rub shoulders with a television set. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move over here now. <laughs> but I'm thankful. I'm thankful that iron sharpens iron. Iron sharpens iron. Iron sharpens iron. And when, I, when I'm not the best that I need to be. And when you're not seeing Christ through me, I pray you love me anyway. <laughs> we're going to love you anyway. Because we're real people. <laughs> we're real people and you're real people. And I know I've said it all uh, often and our, our home folk are probably like, oh gosh, here she goes again. <laughs> but if you come home with me, you're going to see just how real I am. <laughs> and if I go home with you, I'm going to see how real you are. <laughs> We're real people. And when the cameras go off, we're still going to love on you. Hallelujah. And pray that you love on us. But as we said a moment ago, there's no greater love than the Father's love has displayed through Jesus Christ and what he did for us at Calvary. His life was poured out. His life's blood was poured out for you and I. And I'm so thankful that he is, is still pouring out his love. He's still pouring out his love. Come on down and meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me mischief. I'm thankful for discernment. We need discernment in these last days. We need discernment. We need the Lord to give us discernment so that we know what the voice of the shepherd is saying. As my husband again ministered last night, the voice of the shepherd, his sheep hear his voice and they know him. <laughs> We know the shepherd's voice. Hallelujah. We know the shepherd's voice. So thankful that we know the shepherd's voice and we're not going to follow after another. We have to be able to discern what is the voice of our shepherd, what's the voice of our Lord, and what is the voice of the enemy. The enemy intends to do us mischief. He can even come guised as an angel. I mean clothed in white. Looks really good on the outside. S knows how to speak. Knows how to talk. And as we said a moment ago, he'll even tell you the word of God. He'll even speak the truth. But if it's the enemy speaking that truth, it's a lie. It's a lie because the source is a lie. But we have to be discerning as children of God. We've got to know that the enemy intends to do us mischief. But our God intends for our good. He's got plans for our good. Thank the Lord. He has plans for our good. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. He's got good plans for us, whatever that might be. 
but they thought to do me mischief. He knew that they were rascals and that they thought to do him harm. And verse 3, and I sent messengers unto them saying, I am doing a great work. I am doing a great work. Devil, we are doing a great work. Hallelujah. Our God is doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Hallelujah. I'm not getting off the wall. I'm not getting off the wall. I don't care what it looks like in the natural. I'm not getting off the wall. Hallelujah. I'm not getting off the wall. If you go out with nothing else this morning, I pray this gets in your spirit. I'm not getting off the wall. <laughs> we may be off the wall, but I'm not getting off the wall. Hallelujah. I'm not getting off the wall. I'm staying on the wall. When the enemy comes with his chatter and he tries to bring fear into our hearts, and if fear doesn't work and your hand has still got a hold of that hammer and your other hand still got a hold of that sword and if fear doesn't work and you're still building the wall, he'll try to bring discouragement. He'll try to bring discouragement. And you know, just a little discouragement sometimes can go a long way. But so can just a little encouragement. <laughs> a little encouragement goes a long, long way. Hallelujah. And I'm not coming down off the wall. It doesn't matter what it looks like on the outside. Doesn't matter the chatter that's in my ear again. Doesn't matter if it's fear. Doesn't matter if it's discouragement. And I, I know I can start naming things. I know those are two tools in the arsenal of the enemy that he'll try to use. And if he can't get you with those two, he'll try anything else. He'll send more than one messenger. He'll send anybody and anything that he can get you to believe. But I'm thankful we can put a deaf ear to what the enemy's saying. We can put a deaf ear to what the enemy's saying. And that's not being irresponsible. That's actually being responsible. When Jesus tells us that we don't have to worry about anything... We don't have to worry about anything. Hallelujah. 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 You don't have anything to worry about. <laughs> Praise God. That's some good news. Praise God. And I'm fixing to close. You don't have anything to worry about. You don't have anything to worry about. You don't have anything to worry about. Praise God. And you're thinking, well, she hasn't been to my house. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't she know I've got this and this and I got a whole list of things that I can be worrying about. But in Matthew 6, Jesus told us, you got nothing to worry about. You have got nothing to worry about. Absolutely nothing. Take no thought for tomorrow. You know you got to take a thought. <laughs> you got to take a thought to think it. You can take no thought for tomorrow. Amen. No thought. Thank you, Lord. I am taking no thought for tomorrow. Lord, today is sufficient. Yes. This day has got more than enough evil. More than enough trouble in this day. But I'm thankful that I am sheltered under the wings of our God. Hallelujah. I am sheltered under the wings of our Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. And there is a safe place in Christ. There is a secure place in Christ. Hallelujah. That it doesn't matter the storms that are raging, physical or otherwise, spiritual this morning. And really the reality is the spiritual warfare... It's far more real than anything that we can see, touch, or handle. It's real. The spirit world is more real than everything that we can see, touch, and handle. It's real. And you know, I, I know I'm thankful that the Lord doesn't always let us see what's happening in the heavenlies. Yes, indeed. We'd really lock the doors. But on the other side of that, when he does let us see, <laughs> 
when he does let us see, I know he's given us a reminder. I am your victor. Hallelujah. I am the captain of the host. Hallelujah. And I am standing right here with you, right here with you, right there with you, wherever you might be. Jesus is right there with you. Thank the Lord. I'm thankful. I, I, you're not going home with me, and I may not be going home with you, but Jesus is going home with all of us. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's going home with all of us. Thank the Lord. And as Sister Polly loves to say, if I don't see you next time, I'll see you there. <laughs> Hallelujah. I probably messed that up. What is it that you say? I don't see you. Uh, wherever the day comes up, I'll see you in the rapture. That's right. The same, same idea. I'll say, if I don't see you here, I'll see you there. And I bless, I'm so thankful for her, her sweetheart, and her faithful Lord, for all of you, honestly. But if we don't see each other here, we'll see each other there. <laughs> and I was going to say, as soon as I get enough of seeing his face, I'll come look for yours. <laughs> but I'm never going to get enough of seeing his face. <laughs> And you're never going to get enough of seeing his face. Hallelujah. We're going to behold his face. Oh, the king is coming. Hallelujah. The king is coming. The king is coming. Praise God. He is coming. Hallelujah. And Sam and Livy and, and, and Alex, if you don't all mind coming back. I'm thankful the Lord. He did cool it down some. <laughs> Oh, thank the Lord. There's a great work to do. I cannot come down. Why should the work cease whilst I leave it and come down to you? Yet they sent unto me four times after this sort. Don't you know he's going to keep knocking? I'm not going to leave you here, I promise. <laughs> but the enemy is going to keep knocking. And he sent unto me four times after this sort, and I answered them after the same manner. <laughs> Every time he comes, the answer's still the same. Every time the enemy comes, the answer's still the same. No fear, no discouragement, no distraction. No discontentment, no disappointment, no despair. You ever notice that all the disses and all the does <laughs> from the enemy? But my answer is still the same. Jesus, when he comes knocking, when the enemy comes knocking, Lord, you go open the door. <laughs> Jesus, you go open the door. Hallelujah. I I'm tired of messing with the enemy. And that's his goal. That's his goal. That's why he sent not just once, not just twice, not just three times, four times. He wants to wear you down. The enemy wants to wear us down. And it may not be a big blowout. It may not be a Hurricane Ida that's coming your way. It may not be a spiritual hurricane that's coming your way. But it's a consistent, constant downpour. Drip, drip, drip. Drip, drip, drip. And I say a downpour, sometimes it is just a drip, drip, drip. You ever got a fountain in your house? You're trying to go to sleep? Drip, drip, drip. That thing after a while will wear you out to where you got to take a rag and just go stuff it. <laughs> stuff it in the faucet until you can get a repairman to come out and fix it. And I'm so thankful for Aaron. 
Praise God. I'm so thankful for him. He belongs right in that seat right there. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> we love him dearly and we're thankful for him. But that drip, drip, drip is very real. As real as the hurricane, as real as the rain that's pouring down. But our answer is still the same. I can't come down off the wall. I'm staying on the wall. I'm not getting off the wall. If you'll stand to your feet with me this morning. Nehemiah would say that the joy of the Lord is our strength. <laughs> Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful that our hearts let our faces know that the joy of the Lord is our strength. I praise God for that, and I'm not fussing at anybody. I understand when you're in the middle of the storm and, and you can't see shore, you've already, you've already left land, and you haven't quite reached the other side, and the storm has arose, and you're now in the middle of the sea, and the storm is there, and it's very real. And these experienced fishermen are crying out, Lord, are you asleep? Lord, where are you? Here comes Jesus walking on the water. <laughs> Here comes Jesus walking on the water. He won't leave you in the storm alone. You are not alone no matter what storm may come. You are not alone. You are not alone. I wish I could pack you up and put you in my pocket. But you are not alone. Jesus is with you wherever you go. He's with us. He's with us. And he'll speak peace. Be still. He'll, he'll speak peace. Be still. And I know I'm putting two stories into one. You can go home and read the Gospels this afternoon. It'll bless your soul. <laughs> Peter was the only one that had enough courage to get out of the boat. And he's the only one named in history, the only other person besides Christ to walk on water. Hallelujah. He walked on water. <laughs> he walked at water. And I know we fuss at him sometimes saying, man, if he only had faith, if he only had my kind of faith, <laughs> oh Lord, some of us would have drowned. <laughs> But the Bible tells us that Peter beginning to sink. He didn't sink. Hallelujah. When he was beginning to sink, sink, Jesus reached down. Hallelujah. Immediately Jesus reached down. Hallelujah. He didn't wait, wait another second. He knew Peter needed him now. He, you know, he knows we need him now. Hallelujah. We need him right now. And he reached down and he picked up Peter and they both walked back to the boat. <laughs> they both walked back to the boat. Man, I know I may have said this before, but I'd rather be in the storm. I'd rather be walking on the storm with Jesus than in the safety of the boat. Because the reality is there's more safety in the storm where Jesus is than in the boat where he ain't. Is she asking for a storm? Absolutely not. I'm not foolish. But I know that my God is going to be with me in the midst of the storm. Hallelujah. In the midst of the storm. Hallelujah. He's going to be with us. We can't come down off the wall. We're not getting off the wall. We are getting out of the boat. But we're not getting off the wall. Hallelujah. Oh, we love him this morning. You love him this morning. We love him this morning. But he loves us. Hallelujah. He loves us. Whatever y'all want to sing. If you need the Lord to touch you this morning, I want to just go ahead and open these altars up. Whatever you need him to touch you with. I'm going to open these altars for just a moment. And if you need us to pray with you, if you're in the midst of a storm, 
there is no shame and there is no condemnation. He's right there with us in the storm. He is right there with us in the storm. And we'll pray and believe God with you. He'll touch you right there where you are, I know. But if you need some sisters, you need some brothers to just believe God and touch him with you this morning, we're going to take a minute and do just that. We love you, but he'll always love you the most. Hallelujah. called us to do. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you thankful for that? And it doesn't matter what the enemy does. He's defeated. The enemy is defeated. We have the victory tonight, this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. And like that song, 
we're singing right here. Praise the Lord. He's my Alpha and He's my Omega. He's the beginning. He's the end. He's everything in the middle. Praise the Lord. Are you thankful for that today? Praise the Lord. God loves us today. He loves you. We're so thankful that you are here today. Praise the Lord. We just encourage you uh, today, just as you leave, we're going to pray. And the Lord just give you rest, health, and strength. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, Lord, that you are our Alpha and you are our Omega. Lord, you're every, you're in the middle. Lord, you write our story. You're not at all together. And God, we thank you, Lord, that you're giving us strength. You're giving us peace, Lord. You're giving us joy. You're giving us victory. Everything comes from you. And we give you glory today. God, we just ask you, Lord, to give health and rest and strength in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you, Lord. As we leave this place, let your peace, oh God, rest upon us. And your favor in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we say it. And everyone said amen and amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. He loves you. Have a wonderful day. Amen. Greet each other as you leave today. Praise God.